there's one. Oh, oh, oh. Over the years, the Angling Edge staff have caught all different sorts of fish using crankbaits. You name the species, we've caught them. Pike, muskie, walleye, bass, trout, salmon, crappie, bluegill, as well as numerous saltwater, inshore, and offshore fish. Crankbaits are a diverse family of fishing lures that catch everything that swims. The reason for their popularity amongst anglers is simple. They work big time. Crankbaits come in a wide variety of different shapes, sizes, and colors. On the color side, you have a lot of naturalistic patterns and bright attractor patterns. Each has a time and place based on the target species, water clarity, and fish's present feeding mood. Oop, there's a good one. There's a big one. In recent years, we've seen an absolute explosion in custom colors. Diving lips and body shapes are other critical considerations that determine maximum running depth, and wobble or vibration can be key when selecting the right bait for the situation. Give a little pop, there, there he is, and that's how you get him, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> some baits really wiggle, some wobble, some suspend, some sink, others have high buoyancy qualities. Now, let's join Al and James Lindner with more on the art of crankbaiting summer peak bass. No question about it, they definitely produce beautiful fish though. This is sort of a handy little device, it's boat to trailer, particularly, I got a bunk trailer, but it works fabulous for, we got the other boats on roller trailers and it's a great system for pulling the boat in and out. You know, we actually have a variety of different sonar today. You have down imaging, 2D sonar, side imaging, and 360. The cool thing about this 360, actually for this type of fishing here, actually it's sort of interesting as we've been going along this weed edge, I can actually look, and I'm looking almost 65 feet up to the, each, uh, all the way around us, and there's a bunch of old bluegill bedding areas in here. You know, and you can still see those depressions. It looks like little golf balls, but the interesting thing is some of these deeper water bedding areas are just monstrous. I mean, they're like twice, three times the size of this boat. Now those bluegills are done spawning and they're dumping back off on these developing weed edges and the bass are fo sort of following along. You can see what, that's what this is here. This is old bluegill beds right there large deposit of them. You can obviously see there's probably, you know, hundreds of beds there. Yeah, I know. There's another one. Another one. Pretty good fish, Jim. Nice. Pretty good one. Whoa. Come here, come here. Don't go up by Jimmy's trolling motor. You won't like it there. I'm gonna come up and look at you again here. here. Oh gosh, that is a <laughs> bummer. Come on, That's baby. a bad deal. It's a pretty good fish, man. Whoa. I like spot locking. Come on, man. These fish are hotter than a pistol in this, this warm water, man. Oh. Get the little hook on the side. One. Okay, come on. Now you're finally, you're finally wearing out on me? Man, I thought you were slightly bigger than that. But you're pretty good. You are pretty good. You know, Jimmy and I are, we're cranking up largemouth. It's what we term up here in the North Country, it's summer peak. And that means that there's a whole lot of fish like this using these deeper edge weed lines. And uh, sometimes you can just get on a spot and go back to back to back cast crankages. Boom, 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 boom. And catch three, four, five, six fish as fast as you throw in there. And they're good fish, really good fish. The summer peak period, you know, is really a great time when you understand, yeah, yeah, you know, in our area here, that, that summer peak lasts, it, it's about two weeks, where these fish get out here, the bluegills are all done spawning. You know, predominantly those bass 
start leaving that shallow water and they come out on these deeper, deeper areas and start bunching up. They're spread before for a long time, the you know, pods of fish, but now they start going boom, 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 building up together on these edges. Right here, those are bass. Those are shadows of bass. Ooh. Ooh. That's a serious one there, Al. The one thing, when it comes to combing water, a few baits beat a crankbait throughout the summer months. Look at that, there's another great big one with it. Another great big one came up and tried to bite the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the bait out of its mouth. But it goes to show you, you get out on these deep ledges, you know, I mean, there, there's like big schools of fish. That was an, another one of comparable size to swimming with it. It actually tried to grab this DT out of his mouth. Look at that. Beautiful bass. Look at the color of her. I'm not kidding you. It's pretty, they're extraordinarily effective. You know, they make, actually, I think, eight different versions of this bait, this D DT to comb anywhere from four foot of water to 20 foot of water. Dives too. Come here, buddy. Oh. Maybe he grew up a little bit. A little bit better, A little bit. He grew up a little bit. <laughs> Next year, class up. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four. If your count is right and you've seen 25 of them mm -hmm. in there on the side imaging, mm -hmm. I caught five of them so far. <laughs> I hooked five of them. Ooh, there's you got yours. One. Yep. Today's the modern electronics, it's amazing. And once you get used to the like the 360 wood for crankbait fishing, it's really sort of interesting because I'm looking around the boat and I can actually see uh, weed density differences. I can see our weed to rock transitions. You can actually see fish in many conditions. Like we pulled up here and I said, there's a school of bass there. I moved the cursor over, hit it. We backed off of it and started casting there and he started catching them immediately. But it's a little bit of a different technology once you get your head around, you know, each one of these uh, different types of sonar readings, whether it be 2D sonar, down imaging, side imaging, is a, it's a different perspective. Every one of them, each one of them has individual strengths based on, you know, the fish catching processes. You know, in the bass fishing world, as far as the DT goes in a bass fishing world, we've been telling the people at Rapala for a few years now, we need a DT-8, we need a DT-8, we need a DT-8. And they came out with it. And uh, the whole DT series from Rapala is one of the most productive crankbaits to come along in the history of the sport for largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. It's really a killer bait. Fish, fish love it, and boy does it hook them. Yeah, nice one too. The DT stands for a dive to at that depth. It's an extra thin lip, it's a balsa bait, and it has an internal rattle chamber. And it's, it's balanced for long casting too. Good hard action to the bait, really good vibrating bait, and it floats. You could back it off of weeds, a cut cover, and it's got that reaction bite because it's so buoyant when you stop the bait, it floats right back into their faces. It's a heck of a, a, heck of a bait, and this eight is gonna be a home run, I guarantee you that. Or is it? Oop, there's one. A it's a pike. It's got to be a pike, I think. Oh, bass. Nice one. Whoa. Whoa. Come here, buddy. You know, one thing in any crankbait fishing situation, what's really key is to actually uh, getting the bait to run at the right depth level for the spots you happen to be fishing. Right now, we've been on this particular lake, we've been fishing uh, weed edges as well as these hard bottom points. Actually, this one here doesn't have a real lot of weeds on it, but the top of the flat in here is about eight, seven to eight foot of water. And this bait runs perfectly for this particular bait. You can see the spot we're on here. This is a, a really a big spot, actually, when you were to follow the entire contour of this particular sunken hump, it's probably in excess of a mile around. And that's where crankbait fishing really shines and enables you to cover uh, a lot of water relatively quickly. And you can see the tops of these sh shelves in here. 
It's about eight foot of water, seven foot of water up on these big, big flats. We have some inside corners, tips of points, and there's some intermittent uh, hard bottom spots and grass up on the top of the flats, and that's where the bass are positioned on this particular spot. But the real key is, is combing water, and that's where crankbaits shine. You know, it's a real art to crankbait fishing, dude, dependent on the cover conditions you happen to be fishing. You know, some of these bars that we're fishing here are clean and it's relatively easy to cast the bait and just pull it over the top. Now, when you're fishing weeds, that becomes a completely different story. The thing is you have to have the right bait, but not only the right bait, how you're actually fishing the cover, rather than casting perpendicular up onto the bar and reeling it down, you can do that, but then you have to feather your retrieve and reel it down the break. So we're actually speeding up as we're rolling the bait to follow the weed contour down. One, what we do a lot of times when you're fishing like this and fishing weed edges, what we'll do is parallel fish. And what I mean by that, we'll actually hold the boat at whatever depth level, in this case about eight foot, or where the weeds come up to about eight, eight foot, and then paralleling along the edge of the uh, bar. So, but it, it really de dependent on the individual spot you're uh, fishing. Like you can see there, I cast it. Oop, there's one. Oop, ooh, big one. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Oh, whoa, wow. Boy, that guy there just came up and lunched it. Come here, wow, what has he got going there? Wow, look at he just ate a perch. That's really quite bizarre. Look at that. Oh, you gotta land that fish. I don't know that, if I like I don't even know if I really want to land this whole oh there we go. He he shook the he shook look what he was eating. He ate a bit a big perch. You can see a yellow perch. Come here, buddy. Look at that guy there. That's a good one. Nice fish. Boy, she just lunched it. Boy, she came up and just crushed the bait. You know, a lot of these spots, what's sort of interesting is actually is how how you go, what we'll do is a lot of times we'll take and we'll just spot lock the boat. You get in a position where there's some fish and rather than keep on moving down, we'll just hold our position and uh, repetitively make fan casts around the area. You know, nice fish. Yep, there we go. We'll get her back in the water. There we go, Wait, buddy. There we go. He gets the big one and I get the junior. <laughs> You, you might notice we're throwing two different colors. And uh, uh, they got a series of colors that covers about any situation, you know, you're, you're, you're gonna face with anywhere in the country. And color's an important factor. Yeah, you know, and they, they covered colors and spades with the entire DT series, that's for, that's for sure. You know, today's the trolling motors have really <laughs> went through some pretty dramatic uh, advancements you know it just with this particular uh trolling motor the ultrax you know besides having the spot lock feature and a lot of iPilot uh components uh, added to it where i can do you know record a track use a wide variety of different things with a handheld uh, fob but the uh the one of the biggest things things is is uh for a foot control this actually has a like almost an electric assist it's almost like power steering so it's very very easy to steer but so what we're doing is just moving along this deep, deepest weed edge. I actually set my depth highlight at the edge of the deepest weeds, which is about 12 foot of water. And that's what I'm following her along. And we're just, you know, moving along at a real slow to moderate pace, fan casting along this edge. When you're fishing weeds, you're making contact occasionally with the weeds. Yeah, you know, and you're ripping off and you get bit. But a lot of times the bait is actually running free. So what you want to do is give it action in between. Clear the weeds. What I mean by that, you change your speed up. Because sometimes you get those bass are following it. I do a lot of it with the reel, a lot of it I'll pump with the rod, like, like this. This bait is super buoyant. So if they're following it, yeah, you know, you, you stop and it backs up right in their face and they hit it. A lot of times you just change your, I'm doing it with the reel, you're, you're casting out. Yeah, you know, I'm, go, I'm going one speed, then I stop, then I go and I'll burn it a little bit. You're always constantly playing, making that bait do something different. Yeah, yeah, you know, as much of that as you can do generally helps you get a few more strikes because you're not pounding bottom like you are, are with some crankbaits when you're walking sand, gravel, or rocks. Oop, there's one. I don't know. 
Seems like a head wiggler. Oh, there we go. Not a biggie. That one there, Al, hit at the exact moment where I've, I get sort of hung on a, a weed and gave it the quick pop. And that's when it, you know, as it pulled off, that's when that fish hit it. This is a really cool tool. It's actually one of my favorite new tools for, uh, for crankbait fishing. Uh, I'm not kidding you, it keeps your hands way away from it. They make uh, two different versions, one for bigger hooks for like saltwater fishing and for fishing for pike and muskies. There we go. But it's a nice little tool that keeps your hands away from this when this guy's wiggling. I'm not kidding you, I've actually been really sold on this little this a Bubba tool hook out. It's got a little, little uh, hook, grab it, push it out. You know, you got extension, they make another version that's about a foot long but it's a really nice little tool for cranking, or actually for just about any type of lures, but actually for cranking because you're, you know, you did the, you're flapping around with all those trouble hooks. It's sort of nice to get your fingers away from it. Particularly when you, in our lakes, we have a lot of northern pike, which are very, very dangerous, <laughs> which, which I, I, it's a really handy tool for those guys. Jimmy and I are fishing two different rods, but they do the same thing. I'm using the St. Croix Victory Series rods. The one I'm using is the seven foot two inch medium heavy power, moderate action. They call it the power target cranker. It's perfect for throwing these DT8s. One thing about crankbaits, it's easy to set the hook too quick on a fish. When you first feel the vibration of the bait disappear, it's the fish opening its mouth. You set too fast, you miss them. The way this rod is designed, it's almost impossible to react too quickly and your hooking and landing percentages go through the roof. You're lucky we got bellies full. <laughs> the reels we're using is the SVTW 103 series Tatula. These are one of the newer reel series in the Tatula line. And uh, the, they're, they're lighter, uh, they got a lot of super features and uh, uh, we're fishing 6.3 and it seems to be the most generic. Now, years ago, guys were talking 5.5 point. All of that went by the wayside, and almost every cranker I know is fishing a 6.3 these days. You can control the bait a little better with it. And for line, suffix, 12 pound test, fluorocarbon. There's one. No, oh, look at that, another big one. Wow, look at that one there. And we'll see what, ooh, boy, Al, I got a real whopperino here. Look at this, oh. Okay, buddy, wow. There you go, that's a good one there. Throughout the summer months, it's hard to beat a crankbait in a wide variety of different uh, fishing situations for bass, no question about it. Rocks, weeds, expansive flats, no question about it. They definitely produce beautiful fish though. You know, I'm getting a little older now, a little wiser, the word of God says, says wisdom comes with age, hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I learned to be more sensitive than ever through experiences to that, I'll call it a gut feeling, that something isn't right with this deal, you know, or don't go here, or you're there, leave here now. And you know what I'm talking about, and it's strong, it weighs on you. Just get, get out of here, go, or don't do this, or do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, and uh, the older I get, I have become more and more sensitive because of the Word of God, God. It says the Spirit of God will talk to you. It's, it's the Bible calls him the Holy Spirit to protect you. Protect you from yourself doing dumb things a lot of times, <laughs> not from somebody else doing something dumb, <laughs> you doing it. Recently, we had an opportunity at our company to get into a business adventure w w with a guy on a product. And uh, uh, this particular product, we're, it was a pretty interesting product. It looked like it was gonna work. And from day one, I had a check in my gut. This isn't right. It isn't right. Maybe the, I, I didn't know the guy. All I know is every time I seen him, heard him, talk to him, I get a gut feeling that this is not, we shouldn't be here. My guys in the office, they all looked at it and, you know, they all counted the cost. Well, it can't cost us too much, you know, if we make this decision. You know, it's not real risky. Let's do it. The return could be higher on the other side. You know, and I didn't push it no more. 
in, in her, but it, you, know, you know, as time went on, it got more laborsome, more intense, the more it became evident, this isn't gonna work. It's not gonna work. It costed us some money, and what really impacted me, it cost a friend of ours some money, and he put money into it because we put money into it. And it really bugged me, but he is a, a man of God. Uh, uh, he, he, he says, Al, that's, that's business. Yeah, 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 you know, that's the way it is. But I, uh, again, I learned. I learned to be a little more sensitive and a little more vocal. And in this case, thank you, Lord, it didn't cost us a lot of money. But it was another lesson learned. When you get that feeling, don't act, don't jump, pray, pray. If you can't get an answer, don't do it. Don't do it when you get that feeling. Don't do it, I don't care how good it looks. Don't do it. Words of wisdom from an older man that's been around for a little while. <laughs> from all of us here at the edge, you have a great fishing season. See you on the water.